that's like both beautiful and horrible about being self-taught is like you don't know the rules so you have to make them up but like people always have these like crisp clean borders and they use artist tape which is like expensive as by washi tape for like a buck fifty and then you get to create your own borders I like really did start watercolor out of like it being the cheapest and then I like continued because it was like because I loved it and I feel like that's really symbolic for life <laughs> like you do it out of resource and then like you learn to love really started to dive into therapy a few years ago and that allowed me to start processing a lot of things that I had been going through in life or concepts I had been contemplating about myself and my identity. And then I started to use my artistry as a way to really process and explore that in an intimate and vulnerable way. And then I started to understand some cultural connections to the materials I was using, and I was really enjoying the ways that that was um, that that was making me feel connected to my Chinese culture. And so I started to explore things like symbolism or color choice, even composition of painting. So now a lot of what I do with my artistry is I try to tell those stories through symbols and line work, the yin and yang of organic line work. I wasn't seeing what I thought was beautiful out there and so I would just create it myself in my own understanding of it. And that allowed me to develop the, the line technique to where I am today with my gestural, my contemporary impressionist style, my um, very confident, fast paced creative style. My body positivity series started when I was really going through weight fluctuations. I have what's called polycystic ovarian syndrome, which leads into some insulin resistance and some um, regulation issues. It can affect mental health through depression and anxiety, um, and, it, and it's it's a chronic thing. It's going to affect me for the rest of my life. You know, there's ways that we can mitigate it. There's ways that I can be intentional about healing my body, but I needed to understand what it was to accept my body as it is. I was struggling with the feminine identity and the ideals of feminine beauty in, in the U.S. I created this series to really explore that, to see that there is beauty in every body as it is, whether it's proportionate or not. I wish that I could go back now and retitle that series Body Acceptance because I think that it's beyond just body positivity. My Chinese heritage comes from my mother's side, um, that is the Hao family. We were below the poverty line, but we always had enough. We always had food on the table and there was always a way. Um, we were creative engineers and so what we didn't have, we made. But my mother would save all year round and then in the summers, we would spend a month or longer in her hometown in China. So that's in Lanzhou in the Gansu province. It was one of the most impactful things in my life. We went back together as a family about 10 or 11 times, uh, and then in 2014, I had the privilege of going over there by myself to spend time with my mother's side uh, to really reconcile this internalized racism that I was really holding in my heart from my upbringing uh, that I think allowed me shared experience and in inside understanding of of that culture that has allowed me to grow as a person and really understand um, more deeply my identity as well as my family's identity. Mm -hmm. 
My mother and father uh, came together through an arranged marriage uh, in 1991, and so my father was living and working in Fergus Falls, Minnesota. He had written letters back and forth with my grandparents in China through my uncle, who was a co-worker of his, and through a series of events, um, they decided to make that match. And my father went to China in 91, and that December, my mom and dad were married. Just a few days later, I was conceived, and at that time, it was during the era of China's one-child policy, and so my mother had been previously married. Um, that husband had run off. She had a son from that marriage, um, which meant that my conception was illegal, and so the government would have had to have scheduled um, an encouraged abortion date. My dad had no blood children of his own. When this became known to him, he did everything in his power to come back to the States, write letters to local public officials, did the paperwork, and then in February, actually just 10 days before my abortion date, my mother and my brother landed on U.S. soil, and six months later I was born. You know, fast forward to 1996 when my father passed away, my mother, who was not English speaking, was widowed. And so she was left to raise two children under the age of nine uh, by herself. And so when I tell people that I love Fergus Falls, what I mean is I love the community of Fergus Falls that raised me because it was the village that had to come alongside my mom to teach her the customs, to teach us the culture, to allow us to um, make a living and a life in a rural region as Asian folks. When you're an artist and you have other words that you have to add to your identity to explain or contextualize you before you get to just be and exist, and being someone who had this rural Midwestern culture at school and out in the community, and then I would come home, it would be an assimilated version of rural culture. Um, it, it, it was very confusing. Now, living and making life in a rural region, I have to intentionally seek out cultural experiences that are going to essentially help me discover more about my family, my lineage, my heritage that feels really mysterious to me right now. My mom was a music teacher like in China before she came here. And oh. my, um, my grandma had been a, like a traveling performer for like the Asian armies. So like they know about the arts. So like I've always been around it. I always saw it as something that like added, I saw the value it added to life, but like I just didn't know it was something I could do. I think this one's done. My most recent body of work is titled The Audacity to be Asian in Rural America, We Owe You No Apologies, and that is a series of 12 watercolor and Chinese ink paintings or illustrations really on um, rice paper. And essentially what I did was I tried to use the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac, all their attributed qualities. So for instance, when you think of a rat, um, in the US we have connotations for what that means, but in Chinese cultures that often means fertility or um, prosperity. And so I use those animals to storytell, tell stories about my family, the Howe family's immigrant experience in Otter Tail County. I am someone who really cares about the future of rural communities. Part of that means making this region more inclusive to people who look like me. And so that's what I've used this series as, as a way to, um, to share the stories that, that I have experienced, that my family has experienced, that we are ready to share, that can be used as just an introduction to what another perspective is like living in your same community. I want to take it to communities across greater Minnesota just to facilitate some of these conversations and to encourage 
rural communities to understand that Asian folks are dignified folks. They have been here, <laughs> they, they deserve to be here, they don't need an explanation, they don't owe you an apology for existing and living and trying to make a life alongside you that might look a little differently than yours. In westernized painting, there's usually like one focal point or like two focal points. But in like traditional Chinese painting, like the focal point is the story, like you're following the story. So you might find like the crick in the front and then a mountain and then like the temple and then like the heavenlies. And I thought it was interesting because I was already doing that without realizing it. The more I learn about the Chinese culture, the more I learn about ancestors and like ancestor worship and um, the belief systems they have. And one of those is that like your ancestors really guide you. And so I kind of find artistry to be like the avenue through which I, I don't put pressure on it, like I go into this state that I call flow, where I just like, and being someone neurodivergent, you go and you go and you go and you go, <laughs> or a hyper fixate or whatever. Um, but it's, it's where I have the idea, I go into it, and then I just start creating and I can't, I'm learning how to verbalize that process, but really it's just doing. I thought that through this most recent series that I'd be reaching other Asian people in rural spaces and making them feel seen. I didn't realize that neurodivergent and queer individuals would be coming up to me with tear-filled eyes about how they are terrified of returning to the rural communities because of homophobia. I didn't know that I was gonna have these ripple effects with my impact. I am starting to learn the power in my story. I'm starting to understand that um, that all of the pain that I've experienced throughout my life is something that I have been blessed with the environment and the ambition and the opportunities and the community of care to allow me to heal. I'm healing generations of trauma in this life. And that's through therapy, that's through creative outlet, that's through listening to what my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul needs in this moment and tending to that. I did not know until I started to surround myself with other creative people that there were weirdos and misfits out there like me. I didn't know that there were other neurodivergent people that struggled with the same things. I didn't know that there were people that lived with mental illness and were healing through traumas in really, really strong and honest ways. And my artistry has been a connector for me in that it has connected me to community, but it's also connected me to those who need reminders of hope too. I have come through some very, very difficult times and lived through some very um, hard truths and I'm currently navigating that, but I am starting to learn that I don't get to choose who is impacted by my artwork. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at exploralex.com. 
the Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota on the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com.